tuned in to another great episode of Our Smooth Club Podcast, the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics. I am Aaron T. Gavin, and with me, Mr. Jonathan Jones and Mr. Nick Hellman Walters. Gentlemen, how's everybody doing today? Good, man. Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling Looking great. I'm like, Nick, I'm loving that shirt, but for some reason, I just got like blues clues in my head for some reason. Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not, not, not starting hey, 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 right, right, right off the bat. Right off the bat. Sorry. Hey. Okay, man. Sorry. Ryan, right no, I'm joking. I'm joking. But everybody talk about the cows. Talk about the cows. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do the cows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but how's everybody doing? Good man. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So check this out. We got a great show today. We have uh, Emmy-winning meteorologist Demenis Brown. Okay, Demenis is a um, good friend of mine. He was a meteorologist here in the local area in Hampton Roads. He's now in Columbia, South Carolina, doing great things. He currently won an uh, Emmy for meteorology. So. Uh, that's something like it's gonna be curious. I remember Nick, you were you were curious as far as yeah, I, I like, want to know a good question. Like, I, I, I mean, meteorology. How do you do that? What's it? Yeah, <laughs> I got a, a good question. So, uh, ways you can support the show uh, for those who are tuned in. Um, for one, you can go uh, to the YouTube channel Rugged Evil TV. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave us a comment. We truly appreciate it. Also, you can listen to us on anywhere you listen to a podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Google. We truly appreciate it. Also. Uh, every Saturdays at 5 p.m. on the Poolside Cooking TV Network on Roku. Um, yes, on Roku and uh, ESP TV uh, every Wednesday nights at 8 on um, on ESP TV on Facebook. So multiple ways you can tune into the show, tune into the great conversations we have on this uh, program. So, fellas, I'm going to start the show off with a... Uh, <laughs> with a uh, well, actually, no, I'm actually going to call in with our guest right now, Mr. Dominique Brown. And then later on, I'm going to ask a pretty Ooh. interesting conversation. Demenis. There we go. Demenis. Okay, it's spelled <laughs> like Dominic, like D-O-M-I-N-C. Uh, and we're going to joke with him about that, but it's pronounced like Demenis. I told him, I know I was going to get it wrong. So <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and call Mr. Demenis right now. You know, I think if there's one thing that most people want to know about me is about my name. How do you say it? A lot of folks want to know, how do you get Domenis out of Dominic? The answer is, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm named after my dad. It's a family name. But to remember it, think of Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace, Domenis. Domenis, Dennis the Menace, Domenis. After a while, it kind of rolls off the tongue, and you'll get it like that. But you have to kind of hear it before you see it. But after a while, you'll kind of get it. Chief Meteorologist Domenis Brown, weeknights on WIS. Congratulations to WIS News 10's Chief Meteorologist, Dominus Brown, named best TV weathercaster in the Carolinas. Good God, man. Frying everybody off yeah, the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> you don't call a man to fry his name. Erickson. Dominus, how you doing, brother? Good man, how are you doing today? Look, I'm doing great. Look, did I did I pronounce the first name right? Yeah, you got it. Okay, You're spot okay. On, man. See, they, see the fellas, they joking me right now because I actually <laughs> said like Dominique or what did I say earlier? Dominus. Dominus. That's what I said, man. So I apologize, but it's the menace. The menace. The yes, menace. You got it. The menace. <laughs> Well, look, we're so, excited. we're so excited to have you on. Look, I'm going to do a brief bio about you, man, because you got an awesome resume. So, ladies and gents, we are on the phone with uh, Demenis Brown. He's an Emmy-winning meteorologist, certified broadcast meteorologist. He has been enjoying an amazing career working for WTKR, a CBS affiliate, uh, WCTI-TV, which is the ABC affiliate, and WIS-TV, NBC affiliate news programs. He holds uh, being the first black meteorologist, not one but two, uh, on uh, media news outlets, as well as known for tracking several major weather storms like uh, Hurricane Sandy and Matthew. So again, Dominus, Domin ah, the menace. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> it's great to be here, man. It's great to be here. Thank you. You got it, man. The name is unique. That's all it is. It, it tricks everybody. <laughs> That's right. Well, look, we we just want to. Well, I want to first ask by like. You know, what got you involved in, like, meteorology and weather? Was this always something that was a passion since you were a kid? Was it kind of late starting? Like, what got you involved in this line of work? Yeah, I mean, it started out as a hobby as a kid. And I love thunderstorms. You know, I love severe weather. I love lightning. I want to know more about it. It's just that I didn't know what it took to be a meteorologist until a little bit later on because, there was no meteorologist in my family. I didn't even know how to spell meteorologist. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of math and science 
in math, uh, in meteorology, which means that, yeah, I did it well in school, but I didn't think I could make a career out of it. And then what happened was I had the news bug. I liked, you know, reporting or the thought of reporting and anchoring. And so I went to University of Georgia as a journalism major. And the summer before I was supposed to graduate, I had an internship in Atlanta at WSB TV, which changed my whole life. It changed my course, my career, everything. And I had a chance to speak some, to some of the meteorologists I had grown up watching, and they told me their track, how they were able to become meteorologists, and how I could still do it. And so it was almost a full circle moment for me. Um, you know, started out as a hobby, like six, seven years old, and something that was interesting to actually become a, a career of mine. And I went to Mississippi State on campus, and the rest is history, man. That's awesome. Who were some of the um, like people you admire as far as the meteorology? Because I was just telling the fellas, like, you know, it's pretty rare seeing a, a meteorologist of color, African American meteorologist. I mean, for me, all I can really think of is uh, besides the Emmy winning meteorologist uh, Demenis Brown, Demenis <laughs> Brown uh, is uh, Al Roker. So, like, yeah. who were some who were some people that you looked up to? Yeah, I mean, growing up in Atlanta, you would have thought, or at least I was from Metro Atlanta, so from Locust Grove, which is south of Atlanta, about 40 minutes. But, you know, Atlanta was it for us, Atlanta local television. But there weren't that many black meteorologists who, when I was growing up, kind of stuck around Atlanta uh, until later on while and I was, like, in college. So growing up, I mean, you saw Al Roker. You know, he was there, always on television. And so I've always looked up to him, but I've also always looked up to – a meteorologist, her name is Janice Huff, and she used to be on the Today Show on Sundays, but she's been the chief meteorologist at WNBC in New York for years, and I had a chance to meet her at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention, uh, but also she's from Columbia, South Carolina, and one time she made a trip home here in South Carolina and came and visited WIS, so you can only imagine what I was thinking. I'm doing the weather, and Janice Huff, who is in New York, she's been on the, on the Today Show, she's in the studio <laughs> watching me doing weather, and I was so nervous. I was like, what in the world? This this shouldn't be right, you know what I mean? She should be doing weather, I should be watching her. But um, she played a pivotal role, man, and, and my career still has been a great role model and mentor for me. So, you know, there, there are a few uh, meteorologists out there, more meteorologists of color now, mm-hmm. Than there were back in the past, mm-hmm. which I'm really celebrating and excited about. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, look, we, we were just curious, well, especially Nick, as far as like, you know, how did it feel winning an Emmy? What was the, like, like, Nick? Well, how, how do you win an Emmy in meteorology? That, that's the thing that I was kind of concerned about. Like, you know, like, and, and obviously I don't yeah. know the background of it and, you know, I don't do it, but I was curious on yeah. how that process works. Yeah, you know, uh, with the Emmys, uh, you typically submit uh, entries of your work, some of your best work, and then it is judged by other Emmy uh, members uh, who are a part of uh, the Academy. Mm-hmm. And so who really knows which region, which Emmy region will judge your work. But you typically submit some of your best work. And for weather, uh, it's typically, you know, you're submitting a weather task or a show that deals with severe weather or some type of weather topic uh, that is of interest and was pretty good work. And so when I won the Emmy with my team back in 2020, it was crazy because 2020 was already a crazy year. Mm -hmm. And we already know, right? Mm -hmm. It was just a crazy year. And so this was the first time that we didn't have an opportunity to go to Atlanta because we're part of the Southeast chapter to go to Atlanta and celebrate just being nominated and then potentially winning. So we had to watch the Emmy ceremony online on Facebook. <laughs> you know? And so here I am sitting at home by myself <laughs> watching the Emmys. And then all of a sudden your category comes up and you're like, this is it. And then they announce your name and your station that you actually won and then you're looking around the room, and you're by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I get to hug? Who do I get to shake hands with? Yeah, yeah you had nobody to shake hands with, nobody to hug. You had uh, nothing to say besides just congrats to myself, you know? But um, I tell you this. I, I text some uh, friends of mine and coworkers right after, and my weather team after we won. 
And uh, it was a, an amazing experience, an amazing accomplishment, um, something that I had said way back when I had that internship in Atlanta at WSB. Uh, there's another intern and I who always said we at least want to win one. You know, we but he and I both said that we at least want to win one. And I'm glad that I had an opportunity to have some great work that was judged and people thought it was good enough to win an Emmy. And I had that Emmy. What's funny about it? Um, you know, some of my family members, my mom uh, and my dad, they've been here to visit, and they're like, "Where's your Emmy?" I want to hold it. I want to take pictures with it. You know? <laughs> I was saying, let me get this selfie uh, real quick. Let me tell all my girlfriends, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they love it, man. So let me tell you, it, it's just a, it, it's a great thing, man. And and hey, I, I, I hope I have an opportunity to uh, win more or get some more under my belt. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, look, I kind of want to go back to where you say you you always, as a kid, you love storms. Now. I can't stand storms. I don't like storms. I like whenever it was like a major thunderstorm. Like in Hampton Roads, we never really had really severe yeah. storms. I think the worst hurricane we had was what Isabel. I mean, that's the one I remember was yeah. Isabel. And uh, okay. you know, I was young. I was. I mean, I really didn't pay attention. I was still playing games until the electricity went. I'm like, man, what do I do now? <laughs> so I was, right. I was probably suffering more because I didn't have anything to do. But uh, but like enjoying storms was it like just the the visuals of a storm? Was it, you know, like what, what you say you enjoyed storms? Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> so when I was little, uh, me, my brother and my cousin, Stacy, uh, we often had to stay with our grandma, uh, during the summertime when my parents had to work, when our parents had to work. Mm-hmm. So whenever we had thunderstorms coming through, my grandma would always say, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> he would turn the TV off <laughs> and he would put it in front of this big window in her living room. Go sit down and be quiet, right? <laughs> and, and so uh, my memories are being in front of this big window without curtains or really without blinds, that curtain, and looking at these thunderstorms. It was probably the worst place to be. <laughs> well, you know, well, when yeah, a yeah, was yeah, that's a big window. That's a good idea. So, yeah, it was the worst place to be, but we had to go sit down and be quiet. But I loved uh, everything about thunderstorms. I love the thunder. I love the lightning. I love the hail. And I think it kind of sparked my interest about um, what this was all about. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, I knew there had to have been a career about it. And eventually I started watching more local news. Um, I also got, I think, some of this from my dad because he's such a, a weather fan. You know, so when, he, when thunderstorms uh, develop and move near our house, our, our neighborhood, or our community, he would go outside to look at the clouds instead of being inside. And my mom would say, get inside the house. What are you doing? So I think I got some of that from him too. But um, but yeah, man, there's no big specific storm. I I mean, I remember uh, the storm of the century back in 1993. It was a blizzard. Uh, But other than that, there were no big storms. It was just thunderstorms that I just love to to know more about. And, And that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that I finally pursued that as a career. Well, that's like awesome because see here on the show, uh, you know, it's the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics, but we're also big on as far as changing the narrative. And, you know, I was yeah. very honored to, you know, that you were um, uh, made the time of the day to, you know, speak with us because, you know, what you're doing is like for one year, uh, uh, it's a, uh, you've been the only, uh, the first black uh, African-American meteorologist in, you know, two uh, stations yep. as well as at winning an Emmy and me draw it's, it's something that's unfamiliar so you know I feel like what yeah. you do is, is changing the narrative and it's very inspiring I hope you know I hope people that tune into this show definitely are inspired that want to pursue meteorology and um you know before we end the end the interview I want to ask you know like what's yeah. next for what's next for you like what's the you know you won an Emmy what's the next big goal that you want to you know you would love to accomplish you know what uh keep winning more Emmy. <laughs> I want to keep winning more Emmys. No, um, that man said another know, one it, and another one. <laughs> yeah, and another one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what? It's uh no for me. I want to first of all continue to inspire. Uh, however, I can do that. Uh, whether it's in local television, national news, doing weather. Um, I still have a passion for weather and being able to explain things and hopefully tell people about weather events that will happen before they hear it or see it from somebody else from other some other stores but that inspiration part has always been a big part of my life and career i want to continue to inspire young black boys and girls that they can do whatever they put their mind to 
I want to inspire just kids in general that they can do whatever they want to do and just to kind of keep pushing them. Um, most recently, I don't know if you guys probably saw this on Instagram and, and maybe my social media pages uh, and maybe in news in general, but uh, my mentor, uh, Javita Moore from WSB TV in Atlanta, she passed away yeah, uh, Thursday night. That. Yeah, she passed away Thursday night, which has been a tough time for me and a lot of people who she cut. But I will tell you that I learned a lot of my mentoring from her because she was one of those journalists and professionals who would help you out, guide you along the way, but also taught us to continue to do the same for folks behind us and pull them up with us. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to continue to do. Whatever platform it is, whether it's continuing to do local news, uh, moving to a bigger city, uh, that's a dream of mine, our goal, or if it's national news too. Just continue to reach back and pull others up with me. Um, and, and that's how I want to do it, man, to honor her and continue doing that in my career. Oh, that's awesome. Well, look, you need, you need to come back to Hampton Roads, man. You need to come back to Hampton Roads. Yeah, you know bring, what? Bring Let that, me tell you, man. Bring that I, Emmy here. Bring that Emmy here. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm going to bring that Emmy there so you can take pictures with it. It, I, it, I it sure was will. funny I about sure it. Will. <laughs> What's funny about it, everybody was asking, and they still do it. That, is that like the real Emmys that they put on TV? And I'm like, yes, yeah, the real Emmys. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. But um, look, I let me talk about Hampton Roads for a second before we go. I know uh, I love Hampton Roads. I have always loved Hampton Roads. And I was so blessed to work at WTKR for those five years. And I stay in touch with a lot of people from there and a lot of friends who still live there. And I was actually there a couple weekends ago for the Fall Wine Festival at Town Point Park, which gave me life. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I love being out there at Town Point Park. But um, I will tell that you that. the wine talking, the menace? Was that the wine that, talking? Look, that, that was the wine talking right there. <laughs> and look, I had a blast doing it, man. But, you know, uh, Hampton Rose is always a home to me, my second home, mm. in a sense. And uh, who knows? Maybe one day I'll come back there and, and be able to, to work there again. But I will definitely bring that Emmy so you can see it, man, and take pictures with it. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to write, I'm gonna write down our smooth club in, on a tape and put it right there on there just for, just for a photo op, but it's okay. <laughs> right? Exactly. Hey, I'll let you do it, man. No doubt. <laughs> well, thanks again, uh, Demenis, man. Take care. Nothing but peace and blessings and more success, man. Continue changing the narrative. Continue to be an inspiration. Uh, I thank you. I know I, we all thank you for putting out the time to talk with us, man. Take care. We'll talk, we'll talk soon. Sounds good, man. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure and an honor to be on this podcast and be on your show. So thank you. Awesome, awesome, man. Take care. All right, you Peace. too. Ha. Yeah. Yeah. The way these digging talk is irrelevant. I heel kick Troy's Achilles and I shoot like Legolas and fly around Earth on Pegasus. The throne is for the taking, so I'm sending these messages. No belligerent talk, the cup is half full with a measurement The way I'm work these bars and it's like I had a regiment The boy rock solid like sediment Ten years till they see the legacy I don't like bygones, be bygones Cause by the end the time's gone New to the game like Zion One push of a button, niggas is
Man, let me tell you something. I, I, it's when he said that he was the one that would like stay by, stand by the big window. I remember like in pro, like in school, we always had to do those like storm. Uh, mm-hmm. What is it like tornado, storm, drills. Tornado, tornado, tornado drills? Tornado drills. Yeah. yeah, they always like, yeah. all right, be in this corner. I feel like he was that one random kid that's standing right by the door. Get over here! Get over here! Shoot, I have it's funny because I have a I have a great aunt. Um, whenever there's like a major storm warning, she literally will set up camp in her one of her bathrooms have a little pillow like a sleeping bag in the tub and just sit she right there until it's, she ready. She until it's over she's like mm-mm, they're not about to mm-mm. not about to be a dorothy off the wizard of oz over here no nope, not happening but um but no man that was a great you know great conversation it's just i was very curious i, I mean answered our question as far yeah. as like <laughs> how do you want to have me that's the thing exactly. i should have asked him what body of work was it did he say what kind of body of work it was well, it? Or he just said, I, well he said major storms i knew his two major ones that he was that was a uh Pivotal in his career was Hurricane Sandy and yeah. Matthew. So and Matthew. probably okay, one, of, one of those two. Yeah. But man, I mean, it's that it's crazy. I yeah. Yeah. Is even like storm chasers, I couldn't imagine being a storm chaser. Like Yeah. In the in the heart of a storm. Like we they always say the joke. I forgot the name of the guy that's on the weather, uh the weather channel, the um guy with the glasses, uh Oh my gosh! Nobody knows. Uh, anybody. Anybody. No, yeah, no, no, no. Well, anyway, the joke, the joke is if this man is in your town, you might want to evacuate. You, leave, Look, yeah. you might want to evacuate in, in, yeah. in your area. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. But so the conversation I wanted to uh, have with you guys, man, is uh, is a it's an interesting one. So we just went from meteorology. Now we're gonna go yeah. to another category. Okay. The strip club. So as y'all know, oh. I'm in, yeah, 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 the strip club, man. So as you know, I'm engaged, and I was just you know. I don't know how the whole bachelor party process goes. Is it like tradition? You're trying to learn? I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm, well, first, I'm asking married men first. So yeah, I'm, okay. So what did I do on we, my bachelor we got, party? We got two in the room, by the way, too. <laughs> yeah, my we bachelor. Got, we got Mike. We got Mike. We got, but sorry. Over my here. bachelor party wasn't wild. Like, we didn't do anything like that at all. At least some of y'all didn't read books or anything. No, no, no. We didn't read books. I can't remember. I think we went to, like, this is going to sound crazy. We were, I think we went to, like, a theme park or something like they took me to like a theme park or I something say like Cracker Barrel or something we went no they, we yeah we didn't, we didn't do anything, and, uh... anything wild man. and that's because I don't know I mean I I kind of didn't want to do anything uh-huh. wild just because I had already kind of went through a lot of the wild stuff so mm-hmm. um but yeah they took me to this theme park I remember I do remember getting on uh uh, some ride where like you had to like put a harness on and then you like pull a rip cord and oh, drops you. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I remember. Like, I yeah, yeah. Do, so, I don't do drops. I don't do drops. Yeah. Drop. So, I mean, when it came to that and like the party and stuff, I was just like, nah. I, I, you know, I was. So I don't really know if I could speak from I, you know just, that background. You know, what, like, I mean? what I was telling him is, I feel like that's kind of like a old like kind of wives' tale type thing, like the yeah. movie type thing. Or, and, and that's what I think, I think as well, too. It's like, yeah, because, I mean, I don't really care too much about that. That's what I'm saying. So, and then uh, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to do anything that was going to get me hemmed up, like, later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, okay, with well, the way this is now, if you do something <laughs> stupid, like, it's not hard for people to find out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. I ain't Boring. Mike, what about you? <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Look, my wife's here, so... Uh... Hey, Emily. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> and my fiance's no. in the bag, by the way, too. So. <laughs> no, I. It's one of those things. Like, you know, it's. I, I think it's. It's more for the friends, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's basically them saying goodbye to the version of you that they used to know. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily for the individual, because you're about to become something different once you become part of a married couple. Man, it's not just you anymore. It's mm-hmm. it's y'all, yeah. and so everything that your friends want to do, it's. What do y'all want to do? And yeah. so it's one of those things like this is the last time I can say, hey, you want to hang out and be okay with it? Because afterwards, now it's a different conversation. Yeah. So I never I thought mean, of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my yeah. Yeah. No, good answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and but, we went to all the ladies. So but, you know, they all said stuff like you want to go to the strip club, blah, blah, blah. I'm too cheap to enjoy myself at a strip club. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not giving right. anybody yeah. any money. Yeah. Like, so it, it didn't do anything for me. So uh-huh. we just went out yeah. and had some drinks. Shut down a couple bars, got kicked out of a few. So rowdy, okay. but everyone had their Respectful clothes on. Story. Right? You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's funny because I was like talking with Nick uh, earlier. And I was just saying, oh, and, and Emily, I was like, see, I'm that shy kid, and I'm cheap too. But I'm that shy kid. Like if they say make it rain, I feel like I'm gonna toss it, and it ain't even going. And then it's not even gonna rain. It's gonna be stuck and be like, wait a minute, that's a twenty. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be that person. Like I want to know what's going on. You better man. throw out those uh, usher bucks. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw those usher bucks. Uh, but it was like, I'm like, no, nah, and I don't, and I never plan on doing it. Like, I've never been, you know, really don't plan on doing it. She is still back there. But, um, but uh, you know, I was joking with Nick early, like, you know, 
I've been to Hooters, even though Hooters not a strip club, but you know, Hooters, those the outfits are getting, you know, skimpier, skimpier. They're they're in kind of in hot water with the, you know, they have some employees protesting on the outfits. And on top of that, too, I feel like you're gonna find that one like old man that knows all the waitress by the name. Like, hey, Sal, you're, you're you're back again. Yeah, yeah, how you how's your family doing? How yeah. you know, giving everybody a random hug. So but then here's a question. Where did that even where did that idea even come from? Like I having did. to go to like the strip club before, like for your bachelor party. Like I don't understand. I mean, like, I just you know, I always saw it from movies. Yeah, that's exactly. what I'm saying. Like, where did it come from in movies? Like, why why is it like is it something where it was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the strip club, I'm gonna get every all of this out before I get married, because I know once I get married, like I can't movies, do that, TV or, shows. I'm like, what are you even getting out? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand that. You paying. Like that. <laughs> that's the thing with me, is like I ain't I don't have no reason to not throw no money for something that, that yeah. they don't. That is, that is true. I, like, I told him, I was like, money don't have the money to throw. And I'm yeah, like, stupid. I was like, I would rather just go like a little va- like weekend vacation or something yeah. and just do something in general than. Well, uh, well, uh, and a different question I wanted to ask, still, still we're going to stay on the strip club uh, topic. Um, uh, would you, would you consider going to the strip club? Uh, would you consider uh, going to the strip club as cheating now? It's weird. It's weird to sound. Nowadays, you see couples going to strip club together. Like, I mean, uh, there's no, you know, going out to eat on a dinner date. No dancing. No, they want to see. They want to go see some booty clapping. Like that's yeah. that's literally what they go for. So I'm like, what's what's your thoughts on that? As far as like, you know, I know you want to answer that first. I mean, I can't. Answer. I mean, like, oh, well, I mean, I, 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 yeah. JJ's yeah, single like, man, so that's what. What would you uh, say? Okay. I mean, if my girl went, I would. I mean, I, I don't really care. Jay-Z. Like like uh, Jay-Z, like, do they like a girl <laughs> like a girl joint not like some Chippendale thing like that's something different no you ain't going to that wait so you say it one more time I'm saying if it was like a, some Chippendale type thing no she ain't going to that but if she went because I'm like if she went a regular one I mean okay but see then that's a good that's a good thing you just said so you said like if she's going to you're saying if she's going to one that's all females there's no no issue but if it's I mean a, yeah what's she gonna do well I'm just saying but you say if it's a Chippendale that's more because what what's the yeah difference? what's the difference though what's, I'm saying explain. Men's junk in her face and stuff? What you talking about? Okay, okay. What's the difference? I know. I Use know, imagination, Aries. I know my imagination, dude, but I'm just saying if <laughs> if a white if a woman is cool with her man going to see uh you know, going to an all female strip club, then the man, girl I'm end up with, I promise you, is not gonna be cool with that. Okay, okay. What about so you? I, I guess to answer the question, I would see it as cheating. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's just my point of view on it. Cause I would feel some kind of way, you know what I mean, if my wife was like, hey. I'm going here with, you know, my homegirls. I'll be like, nah, it ain't gonna happen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I just know I wouldn't. But then on top of that, though, I also know myself. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I know who I was in the past. I know, like, my temptations and stuff like that. So it's like, I wouldn't really even want to put myself in that position just because I know how I would probably end up playing, you know, playing it absolutely, out. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? And just, you know, and then, I, like I said, I would just feel some kind of way. You know what I mean? Like, I, like because you said, like, if it was, like, Chippendales or something like that, I'd be like, nah, we ain't, Hell we ain't no. doing that. You know what I mean? But then vice versa, so dead, like, I think it would be... Uh, uh, I'm, co- I'm closing this shit down right yeah, now. Yeah, right exactly. Up. We, we also say, no, nah, we coming, we driving, no. Y'all can stay. No, we leaving, we leaving. That's it, that's it. Because, I mean, I think also the other thing, too, is, like, even if you're <laughs> in the strip the lights club... Up. Uh-uh, this show's over. <laughs> even in the strip club, <laughs> I mean, I would think about, like, how... Like mentally, that you know, what I mean, even though you might not do anything like right then and there, but like but mentally, you still see that, but you ain't gonna forget that. And and you and that's I, I mean, I totally agree. Like I would, ne- I definitely consider a cheating. And I think it's just it's weird because, I, and I brought up, you know, nowadays you see couples go there, and I'm like, that's just weird. And and, and I think too, it's a lot of couples now that are more open, the open marriages. You sort of spice movies, up TV their uh, love life. Yeah, like you see a lot of you know movies and TV shows uh, showing like, oh, we should do more open like. We were just talking about the show, uh, You. You got uh, mm-hmm. a scene where they're doing the open, you know, or trying to do like open uh, relationship and stuff. It's just- They can have that. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's really weird. Cause to me, I don't see it how, I don't see how that stuff really strengthens a marriage or just a relationship in general. I mean, they say, what's well, the trust thing? But it's just, it's just- a, I mean, I just- not being a yeah, I mean, I'm not good. married, so I can't say anything, but I just think it's like, you don't really, Respect. you just got, Married too early to somebody that you probably yeah, <laughs> shouldn't be with. And then even going back to like building trust, I mean, there's other ways to build trust. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to be like, okay, I mean, you can trust me. Uh, if, by if I fall back and you catch me, I <laughs> trust exactly, you. But yeah. if you drop me, we divorce. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, that doesn't make, you know, to me, it just doesn't. And even like an open relationship, that doesn't make sense to me either. Because mm-hmm. it's like, 
That's just people who are just attachment like type issues, things, or like they need somebody, but they still want to go out and do whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, look, real quick, fellas, I want to make a um a couple of shout outs to our sponsors. We got sponsors this year, man. I'm really mm -hmm. happy about that. So uh as you see, we're enjoying a good drink of ingenious gin. It's a black owned, veteran owned uh gin. Uh let me see, let me see. An intelligent spin on the original gin infused with the absolute best in natural ingredients to create a smooth taste of the gin explorer and the gin connoisseur. Uh, they strive to provide you with a truly ingenious gin experience. Uh, ways you can go, you can go on um, ingeniousgin.com, check out uh, their uh, selected ABC store locations to support uh, our friend, um, my friend Reggie is one of the co-owners. Thank you, thank you, JJ, thank you for that. One of the co-owners of that uh, gin. Have you ever seen a brown gin? Fellas? Brown. That's what threw me off. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what threw me off, too, because I'm like, anything, bro. I'm like, okay, I like, you know, I like whiskey, I like good. bourbon, all that good stuff. But when I think of gin, I'm thinking, like, clear, clear. right? I'm like, eh. I like yeah. the, it's like a Jimmy Neutron type vibe. Yeah, so. they, they, hey, I like that. Jimmy <laughs> I like Neutron, that. I like that. Or like, a, um, what's the show? Big Bang Theory, when it yeah, like, comes I back. never remember. You watch Big Bang Theory? Oh, man, you're missing out on a great show. It wasn't funny. Uh, anyway, in Genius, <laughs> be sure to go uh, support them. The Upper Loop Collection is a full custom claw there located in Virginia Beach. Our goal is to give you a full custom experience. Follow us and schedule your appointment at DapperLoop.com. Let us create your perfect custom look for your perfect wedding, prom, graduation, or anniversary. Rugged Evolution Beard Care is the hottest new beard care in the market. With 16 amazing scented bombs and oils, you can choose which smell you want to try with our new sample bomb and oil set. Or use the mustache moisturizer and our new leave-in conditioner. Don't forget to add a wooden comb to glide through your beard without snag. Check out our website at ruggedevo.com or call for a private consultation 855-848-30. And remember, rugged is the new smooth. Uh, guys, um, another uh, topic I want to share with you. Does a great coach make a great team or does a great team create a great coach? Like you have like you get coaches like Eric Spolster. He's a, um, I think, is he still the coach at Miami? My, my, yeah, my Miami Heat. Yeah. Um, he, he has three championship rings, but he has them with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, stack squads. So what yeah. my question is, like, is it the players that create that generate a great coach or is it the coach that generates a great team, great players to in order to win? I would say it's probably a great coach. Cause I mean, even though those guys got like you just mentioned, like, you know, you got LeBron, you got D Wade and Chris Bosch, but to get those guys to work together, mm -hmm. like there's gotta be some type of like leadership that can get these guys, like, on the same page. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they're all greats in their own right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you think about even in that squad, when they were winning championships, I mean, they could have went anywhere and really kind of did the same thing and had the same dynamic. So I think with with a situation like that, I mean, it would have to be a coach that could get – I mean, because that's – and then on top of it, that's a lot of egos. Yeah. Right? So you got a Too lot many. of egos going on. And then as a coach now, you have to be like, okay, we're going to take all these egos, all these personalities, and get everybody to play their role mm -hmm. and their position in a way. And I think a lot of that probably has to come from behind the scenes. Yeah, even though they bring, like, the talent mm -hmm. and they know how to play the game, having that coach is going to be able to take those talents individually and, like, okay, now we're going to put this together and be a winning team. So I would think that the coach is probably, you know, one of the most, I think probably, probably one of the most, because you can have – players that are super talented but That's true. they ain't coachable okay what about you jake you, you see i'm kind of i'm kind of iffy because i mean just look <laughs> at look at belichick and like right now because i mean they ain't nowhere they, they, the team, the team see the patriots on the schedule it ain't oh man like you can't sleep <laughs> hey, you but, going, look, what, but let me ask this was belichick the coach or was tom brady the coach 
Tom, I, Tom feel, Brady. I feel like Tom Brady was Tom Brady was the coach. And see, it, it's different because we're talking really just in pros. I think in college, for me, I look at it as more coaches. I look at the coaches more it's involved more in like systems. The, type yeah, thing. because it's like you know a lot of the players. I mean, they're still tremendous, like great athletes. A lot of them shoot. Some of them go pro out of high school. So I mean, that doesn't mean anything. But I, I think just the system is a little more of the coach. You in control of this. Yeah, you do I mean, I guess those might be why they get paid more. Yeah, but because like. It, no, yeah, like um, the pros, I feel like it's just a coach not, I mean, obviously systems, but mm -hmm. them understanding which players in those positions is, because I mean, anytime you watch a sports documentary about a team, it's just usually a year, <laughs> couple years before when a coach was trying to get those specific players. That's to, true, that's true. So I feel like that's like pros wise, that might be like. Well, and it's like, you know, if you ask a lot of people, what do you prefer watching college sports or pro sports? They always say college because they're like, well, you're just watching a bunch of millionaires. Anyway, that being said, do the millionaires turn into like the coach? Like you said, who coached the squad? Was it Tom Brady or was it Belichick? So you have the leadership is what really then creates a great squad. Now, who's who's in charge of that leadership? We will never know because we see yeah. some coaches, they will, you know, be great one season and turn to some trash the next season. I mean, and, even with um, the Buccaneers coach, like this past oh, year, Bruce he Aaron's. was like, he was like talking about, I mean, yeah, he's like, look, I'll let Tom Brady do what he want to do if he. <laughs> If and he that's a smart it, coach right if he, there. If he, like, he is like, sometimes I let him just take over. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's like, so he came to my squad with, um, I believe, what, six Super Bowl rings, all MVP? He can say whatever the hell he wants yeah. to say. But, I mean, of course, Bruce, so Bruce smart man. Bruce like, look, they paying me anyway, so yeah. you can say whatever you want. But Because then he was he was retired, and then he came back, right? He was. He coached, uh, I know he coached Arizona. He did. He had some, some a couple good years with um, Arizona Cardinals before that. Ooh, I want to say he was with, I think came from the Saints. I, mean, I could be wrong, but he's been coached for a minute, but he had, he had retired due to the health reasons. And mm -hmm. then he came uh, back and created this huge squad over in Tampa and, uh, you know, won a Super Bowl and all that good stuff. But it was just a question I was always curious because, you know, we talk about how great uh, uh, um, Phil Jackson is as a coach. Now, as a Knicks fan, we were excited to have him on as, what was he, Came Was he pre president of the Knicks organization, GM? Oh, uh, 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 my bad. I was, like, uh, uh, I was just, well, I just needed the head nod, but it was like, <laughs> it was, I think he was like GM or pres president of the um, of the uh, Knicks organization. Yeah. When he came in, we're like, oh, you know, winning coach, came from, Jordan. Came from the, the Bulls, the Lakers. We're like, oh, we about to get to winning. Worst years under his belt. And he was trying, he was bringing in a lot of those talent uh, too. So mm -hmm. in that case, we're like, well, did Phil Jackson create those dynasties or did the players really, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just thought, I thought about that question. Let me, what are you about to say? I mean, just like when you think about Phil Jackson, though, you think about a lot of the stuff that he did have the players doing. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That brought that, like, like I said, like they all had the talent, but he was able to individually, like, you know what I mean? Like he's dealing with all these, all these different personalities mm -hmm. and being able to bring them together. And just get everybody to be on the same page. That had to, that's got to be hard, man. That's got to be hard, man. I, I think about it like, and that's why I feel like sometimes it would be more important for that coach because mm -hmm. to get all them people together on the same train would be would be kind of challenging. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, right now, look at the Lakers. Like their first what two games they lost, and they have what four or five Hall of Famers on their team. Stacks, stacks, on stacks, and it's like Super you can't. Teams. You can't not win. Like, there's no excuse for y'all not, not to be to winning. Win. Right, exactly. Strip clubs around strip the world. Strip clubs, you know what I mean? Around the, around the world. <laughs> uh, but, man, I, I, again, always enjoy it. Um, 
yeah, just want to toast on another great episode. Again, be sure to uh, follow us on all of our socials. Oh, my man, my man been sick of too much. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Call yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yourself something. No, no more than that one. I got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a burger right there. That's pretty good. But, you know, follow us on all of our socials. Uh, Facebook page, Our Smooth Club. Uh, our Smooth Club on IG, of course. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We truly appreciate it. Just continue to support the show. We'll see you next time. So, fellas, cheers on another great episode. Ha, 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 ha.